how is everyone doing today? Good. Okay. So while I try to figure out quickly just how to share the screen, I'm just going to get started on uh, introducing myself. So my name is Warda. I am a photographer. I started about nine years ago. And uh, I started like, uh, basically, I started off as a volunteer at Muslim events such as Muslim Fest, and then eventually led to Mist, things like that. Um, I started off as doing portraits. And then I recently ventured into wedding photography about three years ago, um, or four now as it's 2021. So Alhamdulillah, it's been a good journey. Um, just been working on that. I also just graduated from IT in June. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing. Currently, because of COVID, weddings are a little bit on pause. Um, but I am working on my website currently, and that's about it. So let's begin. Let me just, not sure why I can't share this. Uh, I've made you co-host. Um, if you're still having issues, just let me know. Yes, now it worked. Okay, so. Is everyone able to see the slideshow? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. So the first page, again, just the introduction that I was going over. My name is Warda, wedding Warda. photographer, graduated in IT, um, again, started in 2011, just currently running a, a wedding photography business. Um, we'll go to the second page. So course breakdown. So this is a four week course, as you guys know, um, it's going to be focused on phone photography. Everyone has a device that they can take a picture of with, correct? Yeah, <laughs> sorry, I think it's a little bit of delay. Um, okay, so, so the basics of photography, um, they basically revolve around lighting, exposure, aperture, ISO, composition, and I wanted to include a little bit of a, a slight editing technique, which I use on an app called Bisco, just to touch up um, pictures very slightly. And um, we, if we get time, we might also work on portraits, like slight portraits, just, uh, just to get into it a little bit. Okay, guys? So today our focus is going to be on um, exposure and composition, but we'll, ex we'll go into the components of what makes a picture a picture. So um, exposure is usually what, uh, how much light is in a picture. So there's two, there's two ways, um, sorry, it's either picture can be light or dark. There's only two things, right? So that's what exposure is, which we're going to be getting into more today, as well as caution, which is the last component. Um, aperture is also how much light is getting into the actual camera. So when you're using, a, when you're taking a picture, or when, uh, even from your phone or a DSLR, it just basically depends on how much light is getting into the camera. So that depends on um, how bright or how dark a picture will be. Um, shutter speed is more, again, focused for, um, like, there's a slight concept of it in phone photography, but it's more based on DSLRs. It is a major component of photography. So it's, uh, it's how fast the shutter clicks um, when you're taking a picture. So if you were to take a picture that um, has a slow shutter, for example, it would be a much brighter shot as it has time to let more light into the shot. Whereas if you were doing a, a faster shutter shot, it would probably be a darker picture. Um, on your phone, it's mostly like neutralized to a certain shutter speed length, um, which we can usually with phone apps like edit it after, like it's very basic. Just, for, just to make sure that everyone's able to use it, right? Um, ISO, again, it's so basically, in a sense, it's how bright or how dark a picture can get. So with ISO, it's, um, you guys might be able to relate to this. So let's say if you're taking a picture in the daytime outside, sometimes when the sun's too bright, it's very hard to take a picture because the picture might be too bright, right? Whereas if you're taking a picture at night outside and there's no light, no street light, nothing, it's usually going to be very hard to take a picture. Now, um, if you use flash, you may have noticed 
that flash, since it's directly hitting the person, sometimes the flash may not completely get the picture correctly, like it might be too bright, or it might be too dark, or the flash goes off a few seconds later, and by that time, the, the person has blinked or closed uh, or stopped smiling by that moment, right? So that's just momentary pause. So that would be an example of shutter speed. Because when you're using flash sometimes, what, the, what happens is the shutter speed actually gets slower, so the picture can be brighter with the flash but that also means it takes a few seconds longer. So sometimes if you're holding a pose, you might get tired of holding it or you might accidentally blink by the time the picture actually happens. Um, and the last one is composition, which is extremely important because nothing is uh, possible to take a good picture. You can have amazing exposure, amazing aperture, amazing shutter speed and amazing ISO, but if a picture is not positioned, if the person or the object in the picture is not positioned properly, then it's going to be very hard to have a great picture. Now, um, composition, when that comes to your mind, when you hear that word, um, does anyone want to tell me what comes to their mind? It's okay, guys, don't be shy, just take a guess. Okay, if it's okay if nobody wants to talk about it, we can discuss later as well. We have so, a couple of answers in the chat, so I'm just gonna read those out. Uh, so Zainab said to create something. Um, Ahmed said the content of the picture, the people and the objects. Okay, so that definitely is, uh, they're both part of a composition, what makes up a composition, because like you guys were saying, like things that make up a picture, right? So, um, Basically, composition would be how a picture is positioned, um, what's in the picture, the object, where it's positioned. Um, because, like, let's say if you, so a basic example of composition would be like if you're, if you, if I'm taking a picture of someone, right? How are they placed in the picture? Am I taking the picture from a higher angle, which is going to make a person that is of my height probably look even shorter or smaller? Um, whereas if I take the picture from this angle, like at a higher angle, then it's going to make them look even bigger and probably um, like fill up more of the frame of the picture. So, so um, I guess a basic way of saying it is if you, um, if you, it depends on what kind of picture you're trying to take. If you're trying to take a very um, like a professional shot or if you're trying to take a very happy picture or a portrait, your picture is going to be more tight like you want it closer to the person, you want the picture to be on the person and not what's behind them. So it'll be a very tight picture. It'll be closer to maybe their shoulders or like up to their waist, not too much of the background. Whereas if you were taking more of a nature shot, you'd want it to be a very wide shot. That would be, um, sorry, I'm not sure what that sound was. A uh, large, large space and the one before it was the medium space, which is the top half of the body usually. And the large space or the long space is where, where, it, where it covers a big amount of areas. Yes, that's also definitely a part of composition as well. Okay, guys, so today, again, we're going to be, I said, we're going to be talking about uh, exposure and composition. So exposure, right? So it's the amount of light that reaches your camera. Um, exposure actually goes hand in hand with lighting. So um, basically, when you're, when you're using exposure, right, this might come up as a shock, but if you're taking a picture, um, you'd actually rather have less exposure, like the best pictures. Um, the greatest tip you can get for taking an amazing picture is the best pictures actually come out when you have um, what you call overcast lighting. Like if you're outside, overcast lighting is called neutral lighting, right? So does anyone know what it looks like after a rainy day, like how like the sun's down and it's a very gray kind of day? Everyone knows what that looks like, right? There would be a rainbow sometimes. Sorry? There would be a rainbow. Yes, there's also rainbows, which are really pretty for pictures if you're lucky to catch one. So overcast days are actually extremely perfect for outdoor pictures because um, too much light is not good and too less light is also not good, especially if you're taking pictures from a phone because a phone won't capture um, as much detail already because uh, 
it's supposed to be a phone is like a, a gen, generic sorry generic device it's supposed to do phone calls emails things like that as well as pictures whereas a dslr would focus just on pictures so it's going to be it's going to take better pictures than a phone would although if you do have you or a parent or a sibling does have like some one of the newest phones then yes they definitely do have uh, different techniques that you can um, change and take higher quality pictures or pictures in lower lighting and night mode things like that so um relating back to what i said so basically um a day that's too sunny would be hard to take a picture it would be hard to take a picture in a day that's too sunny sorry because um when a picture when when the sun is out that brightly it's actually going to make your picture uh, way too bright, which is going to make it hard to make out the details of your face. Now you want people to see in, in the picture, you want people to see, you know, like where your cheekbones are, if you're taking a pic picture of a person, where the nose is, where the mouth is, where the eyes are, details like that. But if the picture is too bright, then you're not gonna be able to capture that detail. Whereas if a picture is taken at night, you might have a mediocre amount of lighting from a street light or et cetera, but it won't capture the details again because of the lack of lighting. The picture will, what happens usually when you take pictures at night is they usually get blurry or um, fuzzy as you like to call them because of all the pixels, right? Um, so overcast, that's why overcast lighting is the best lighting. Again, relating back to natural lighting and uh, lower lighting. So. Again, it's obviously always better to take pictures outside um, just because outdoor lighting is, I guess, the most natural. It hits the most natural. You don't have to use extra lighting. You don't have to, because if you use, so basically, um, if, you, if you use separate lighting from your phone, it's hard to position because then you have to get into things more, which are more complicated, like, um, what angle you would have to place the lighting like how it would hit the face because if you if you're if you're standing in an area i'm sure you guys have seen if you're standing in an area where the sun is hitting you from this side this side of the picture is going to be very dark and that's called um one to two ratio photography uh, one to two ratio lighting so that would mean um bright light from this side and less light from this side um one to one means even light from both sides which would be ideal Next, sorry, um, composition, which we discussed earlier. Uh, composition would be, so element of how a photo is arranged. So that's basically a light description of what composition is. Um, again, what we were discussing earlier about like, you know, the placement of objects or people of anything in the background. So like right now, if you take a look above, you actually see there's this pillar that's closer to the picture, whereas that pillar is further back. So if I place something, like if I was taking a picture of me here with my phone, the wall in the back, this wall would be a little bit slightly blurrier than this wall over here, just because it's closer, right? So things like that, if I had a person standing right here versus, versus if I had a person standing right here, um, it would result in me being the complete center of focus and the person that's standing right here to be slightly out of focus and this person would be very out of focus. Just to give you an example of that. So you guys can probably um, do, use this same tip that I'm letting, uh, telling you about with your phones. When I'm going to be giving you guys an assignment at the end of this course today, uh, at the end of the class, and you guys will be utilizing the tips to um, create your own picture, take your own pictures, um, it'll be a set of five. So keep that in mind, guys, because this stuff is actually going to be useful for you for next week's class, okay? So again, um, can be made up of many elements or a few, as well as angles. So again, what I was telling you about earlier, so if you look at this window, do you see, like this window is straight if I'm looking at it straight. But since I'm looking at you guys and the laptop is at this angle, the, um, the window is shown at an angle, right? So this would be like a different angle of, of when I'm taking a picture. If I took it from here, the picture is at this angle. But if I take it facing the, the window, it's going to be completely straight. So those are the same uh, 
types of things that can make a difference in a picture. So let's say if you're standing, like if I was standing in the middle of a street, right? Buildings would look very different because the, um, the depth would be very different. Buildings that are closer to me here, like right here, so where I am, would be more in focus, whereas buildings in the back would be uh, out of focus and they would be further back so that you could see more of the building, whereas the building closer to me would probably be cut out or you can only see the first, first level where I am standing, whereas buildings in the back, you can probably see like 20, 30 floors or maybe the whole building, okay? Sorry. Um, so again, relating back to depth and focus, make sure that if you want to take a picture that has someone in the back and you want them to also be in focus, that you uh, try to keep them at a, um, you try to keep them in the same uh, line that you are in, standing right beside you, or maybe like one step behind you. But if you want someone to stay in focus and you're gonna have them five steps behind you, that's not gonna be good because then they're gonna be out of focus, right? And now we're gonna talk about how to apply your skill, uh, how to apply your skills in everyday life. So when we're talking about photography, photography isn't just something that, you know, you do for events or you do for school or for projects. Um, it can actually be something that you do every day for fun, you know, like right now everyone's home, everyone's in quarantine. Um, so it's actually one of the best times to, you know, take advantage of all of this time you have and capture some moments. Like these are moments that you might want to remember years later. Obviously not like staying at home and, uh, you know, not doing as much or the times we're living in. But you remember like all the time you spent at home with your family, like this is a time where everyone gets to be home with their family and spend more time than you'd ever get. So in a sense, what I like to say or what my, um, what my main motto is for my business is actually um, capturing moments that last a lifetime, which I like, like to live by. So when I originally started uh, getting into pictures, I was also like eight or nine years old. And I used to take my dad's um, old digital camera and I would just take pictures with it whenever we went to events or anything like that. And it wasn't the concept of photography that got me into it. It was just a, uh, the concept of taking pictures, right? To like help make memories. Um, and obviously they weren't the greatest pictures, anything like that. But when you start off, it's not about taking the best picture or the greatest picture. It's about making a moment that, you know, lasts a lifetime. You want something that you're going to remember 10 years later. Maybe if you do end up becoming a photographer, that's going to show you the progress from you starting now versus what you're, what work you're creating 10 years down the line. And even if you don't become one, it's just going to be like, Hey, remember, like, we had so much fun at home taking these pictures and now years later you get to reflect on that so things like that like even when school starts back up um maybe after school you can like dedicate or for adults you can like take time out like just for yourself and just take a couple pictures you could do self-portraits like you know set up the camera um use it use the back camera it's a lot better it's a lot clearer so what you could do is set up the back camera in front of you in such a way that there is a mirror in front of you so you can actually see what the front of the, the phone is looking at and that way you'll be able to take um pictures of yourself um and again it's very simple um amazon has inexpensive ring lights um i'll see for next week if i can actually link a couple for you guys um, ring lights are essentially, if someone doesn't know what it, what it is, it's a ring, uh, sorry, it's a light in the shape of a ring and it's on a stand so you can adjust the light, uh, adjust the height of the light, sorry. And what that does is you can actually stick your phone in the middle and it helps you make a bright, it helps you take a brighter picture or a more natural lighted picture. And some actually have a uh, option where you can turn the white light into a yellow light and dim down the brightness of it. So it definitely helps if you want to take pictures at home, just to practice or anything like that. And similar for phones, it's on Amazon. I'll try to find that as well. It's a clip on flash or a clip on light which actually is a lot better than the phone light um, simply because it would just be a little bit brighter or if you're taking a picture from the front like a selfie it uh, helps br brighten your pictures okay um next right so we're talking about capturing moments 
Um, I think a major concept about photography is quality over quantity. And this is majorly overlooked just because I think when people talk about photography, they talk about, you know, what equipment do you have or what camera do you have or what lens do you have? But you don't have to start with a camera. You can easily just do it with your phone. It doesn't have to be the greatest phone or the latest phone. It could just be like a regular iPhone or an Android. And it's not about, it's not about, um, again, how nice uh, the picture has come out. It's about, you know, how much effort you put into it. If you're actually trying to make a point to use, you know, like once you get to the end of this course, you'll know about exposure, ISO, aperture. And yes, while you're not in control of all of these concepts on phones, just because they don't really have the option for you to change aperture and things like that, what you can control can make a really big difference if you actually know how to use those tools. So quality over quantity is basically you're trying to make the best of what you know and not focusing on having the best equipment or the best um, items in the picture, things like that. Like you can make a, you can make a better picture by utilizing what you know to the best of your ability, right? And again, composition makes a huge difference. So if you, uh, composition, and then again, uh, relating to that, which we'll talk about later, is editing. Um, editing can make a simple picture or a picture that's quite colorless become a dreamy looking picture. Okay, and I'll actually, if I get time uh, today or another day, I'll show you guys a couple uh, pictures on my page and how um, or before and after from something I've edited. So you guys can actually take a look at what editing can do to a picture. And again, light has a big um, relation to composition because if you, if you have the right lighting, it can literally make or break a picture. Okay. So some tips and tricks that I wanted to talk about today for the assignment that you'll be doing is, so this app called uh, Visco, um, you guys are able to write that down. I will try to see if I can actually um, upload this PowerPoint to um, the drive link that we have for the assignments or make a separate folder and uh, include it in, over there. So if you have an iPhone or an Android, it should be able to, I think iPads as well, but I will confirm, um, you should be able to download the Visco app. So most components or many components of this app are free but I know some are paid as well, but you're, you're uh, able to do many of the features without paying for it, right? So basically what Visco is, it's a light editing app. So when you think of editing, editing is not always Photoshopping a picture. Like it's not about, you know, adding a different background or, you know, like removing something from the picture. Um, editing can also be like changing the lighting or contrast, you know, making a picture darker in the darker areas and lighter in the lighter areas or changing the highlights. So the highlights would be like, if something is way too bright, you can actually dim it down in a sense where you can, you're almost dulling it. You're not taking away from the light, but you're just dulling that area. And so the rule of thirds are very important. Uh, it's one of the main components of photography. So what it does is basically it divides a picture, which I'll be teaching you guys in the, one of the future like, uh, courses as well. It takes any picture and divides it into three sections. And it's said that if you actually position uh, the person in like where I'm sitting right now, if, you if I take a picture, if this frame right now is a picture and you take a picture where the person is right here, not in the center, you're actually focusing more on the object in the picture or the person who's looking at it will be focusing more on the picture if, it if the person is right on the second and the third line over here compared to if they were in the center of the picture. So it's just a... Um, you muted yourself by mistake. Oh, it looks like... Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, do you know where I muted myself? What was the last thing I said? No, no, yeah, you just muted yourself like two seconds ago, so... Oh, okay, okay. So, um, rule of thirds you were talking about, right? So, um, preferably, if you were taking a portrait, you would want to take the person's picture from this angle. Um, not only does it show the person in focus, but it also shows a little bit of the background in a sense where you're not blocking it. So you're not blocking it completely. If, if I was here, I would be blocking both sides of 
the background. Whereas if I'm here, you kind of get to see the sides um, in a clearer way. Even if it's a little bit blurred, it's just kind of to, you know, like I'm not completely blocking the view as well um, while keeping myself as the main focus. So I would prefer for the assignment, if you guys actually, um, you don't have to go far. You can literally just go outside your house or building or maybe in your backyard or even inside the house. If you have, a, if you have an area in the house where you have a bright window, you can actually set up in front of that and use natural light. Especially with phones, it's very hard to take a picture um, after it gets dark and lighting like, you know, white lights or yellow lights. It just doesn't give the same effect. And you'll notice that when you take your pictures, it won't give the same effect um, if you're using natural sunlight. So I would recommend for the assignment that you guys actually use daytime light. Try to do the assignment before 5 p.m., um, before Maghrib happens, so you'll get the best use of light. And actually, if you want to, you can take a couple, if you want, take a couple during the day and compare yourself. So the light is mainly out, like the brightest, at 12 p.m., um, 12 or 1. You can take a picture then, take a picture at 1 p.m., and then take a picture closer to sunset and see what I was saying earlier about how like um, when you have overcast or natural lighting or even lighting um, closer to sunset time, you'll actually get a different view or a different, uh, different light in your picture and you'll see how even it is compared to the middle of the day at 12 p.m. And you don't have to go anywhere, like I said, if you don't want to, like you can literally do it from home. If you feel like you want to use a lamp and you want to do it after dark, you have a couple lamps or you have lighting at home, um, definitely take advantage of that. Um, I'll actually tell you guys uh, a funny story. Um, there have been many times where I don't have my camera on me and I just go to a friend's house or a wedding or things like that. So what I've actually done is I've had I'm taking a picture with one phone. I'll have the flash off from the phone that I'm taking the picture with, but I'll have three or four friends on this side and three or four friends on that side, and they have their phone flashes on. So of course, you don't have to do that, but it's funny because what happens is like you just have you know three or four friends with their flash on, and it ends up giving the perfect glow on the person in front of you um, instead of instead of uh, having you know a full camera or a full flash. Like sometimes you can make do with what you have and just use the people around you, or you don't you use a, a siblings or another parent's phones and just have them stand there beside you. Turn off the flash of the phone you're using and have them turn on their flash from beside you or at different angles and don't get that in your shot, but have them, you can position it. You can tell them, hey, like move your hand higher, move your hand lower. And you'll actually see how much more natural the picture looks when the flash isn't coming from the phone itself that you're taking the picture of. So um, we'll talk about the assignment, but did anyone have any questions or anything like that before we talk about the assignment? I did. Yeah. I'll talk about when you in the camera, if you, because um, you can ask people on your college campus if you have no family or friends that are interested in taking pictures, like me. My family and my friends are very private, so I would ask students in like the clubs I'm in if they could take pictures and tell them that I'm trying to be a photographer one day. Definitely. And see if they're interested um, in helping me. I know some people would say yes, and some would say no. Um, so are you asking like how to ask people or is that is it okay if you use other people? Like how would you ask other people? Okay, okay. So um, I think it's I think you're, you're asking if you take your if you want to ask people at school Yes, okay, so you can ask people at school, but you can ask like right now obviously this is not quite possible or feasible um, but eventually when you do, you could actually go to downtown or your, your campus. Um, I would actually say like if you, if you feel like, you know, like at school, it's harder for you because there are people you know, try going to an area like downtown or uh, a park or things like that. And you can actually ask people over there. Just be like, hey, um, I'm a photographer. I'm just here at the park. And I just wanted to take some pictures of you. Would you mind? And of course, if they say no, then... Um, just move ahead. But if they say yes, then you can actually ask for their email after or their phone number. And, you know, you can also send them the picture be like, hey, I'll let, I'll give it to you as well. And you're free to post it as long as you give me credit. 
Um, so if you have an Instagram or anything like that that you want them to credit, you can also let them know about that. Um, and for college, um, I think one thing is uh, people, people at our age might be more open to having their picture taken. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Exactly. So, exactly. So, it's just, it's, it's, yeah. So, it's like so yeah, it was, you people off the streets, they most likely may, might curse at us or whatever. I feel like it would be better to ask college students. So I think it depends because uh, I think college, yes, definitely people would be okay with it. It would be the same. You would just uh, walk up to someone and you try to take at least, like if you, if you really don't have a friend um, that would be willing to take, have their picture taken, just take your friend with you um, and just be like, hey, like, you know, I have a friend because sometimes people more, feel more comfortable if there's like more than one person. Um, and just be like, hey, like, you know, I just want to, take a, I just, I'm just around. I want to take a couple shots. Would you mind? And I will be sending you the pictures as well. So that gives people like, hey, you know, like free pictures. And most people love um, free pictures. And if someone does get upset or anything like that, apologize and move on. Um, but I actually would say downtown is not a bad idea. Um, I have done that myself. Um, you it's have done what? Sorry. You well, have done what by yourself? I have, I have done both. So I've done downtown and uh, at school. Um, I actually, when I got my first DSLR, it was the first day of university. So I would take my camera to school every single day and just ask people, um, friends, people in my class, uh, people like, that, like, hey, like after class, like, hey, can we just step outside? Can I take a picture of you? And I'll send you the picture. And oftentimes they do. Do you think it's appropriate to ask, do you think it's appropriate to ask like staff members or only students? What would you say? I think it's okay because they have the right to say no. Right? It's not like uh, anyone's being forced to. Or, um, it's not like, you know, you're going to chase them. So it's just a simple yes or no answer. And I think most people are okay if they see you, you know, like if they, if you tell them what you're doing, if you show them the shots, and if you just, you know, give them a smile, most people, that's all they need. Cool. But if you want to actually, like, we can also like have a separate conversation on the side and I can give you more tips about this as well. Okay, so it looks like Musa has a question. Yeah, that would be great if you could do that. Can you drop your email in the chat? Yes, definitely. All right, um, I think the moderator was speaking. Yeah, so Musa has, a, has his hand up, so I'm going to ask him to unmute, and I believe he might have a question. Um, yes, thank you. Um, about the Visco app, um, it's only for apples, and I don't have an Apple phone. Okay. Um, okay, so there should be another app. It's called Lightroom. It should be available on Android as well. Um, oh. I will try to see if I can write it down in the chat once I'm done the uh, presentation. Right? I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. Because uh, it's called Lightroom, yes. It should be by. Yeah, is it the yeah, Adobe one? Yeah, that one should be available. It's actually is, uh, quite similar. Isn't it for money though? Uh, no, the uh, mobile versions are for free, so you should be able to download it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the uh, mobile Lightroom version is actually quite similar to Visco. I just Personally, uh, I use a bit of both. I just thought Visco would be a little bit um, easier to get your hands on. Um, Lightroom can be a little bit challenging, but it's uh, they have similar concepts. So I will definitely go over um, some of the concepts if we get time today, or if you if you guys uh, want, I can actually put a whole segment of that, uh, a small segment in that in our second lesson. Okay. So Wait, I have a question. Do we have to do all of those? All of them? The, which ones? The apps? No, like the five photographs, base, base, it, lockdown, use skills, learn, no, Photoshop, Visco. So it's one assignment. It's just the rules of the assignment that I was trying to say about. Um, I wanted the five photographs to be about lockdown and use the skills learned as well as we're not Photoshopping anything into it and we're using Visco or like I said, you can use Lightroom as well. Okay. Um, we had one question in the chat. Uh, Maj asked about Snapseed. Snapseed is also a good um, app. I personally don't use it, so I didn't recommend it, but there's nothing wrong with it. It's an amazing editing app. Um, you can also use Snapseed. Um, 
but I will be teaching on Lightroom or Visco. I think I'll stick to Lightroom actually because not everyone has access to Visco. So if you did want to download Lightroom, it's going to have a very similar um, idea of what I'm teaching and you're able to use that on Snapseed as well. Anything else? Sorry. Okay, so we have one question by Jamil. Jamil, if you want to go ahead. Um, for um, like uh, based it, uh, basing it about lockdown, like does it does the photo have to be like about lockdown or is it just like anything like inside or something? So I can. Do you mind? Uh, what if I answer this one? Go ahead. Okay. So the idea is using the skills that Warda taught you today. Um, the topic is going to be a year in lockdown. So take five pictures that make you think about the past year that you spent in a lockdown, but using the skills that Warda taught you today. Um, I'm going to put a link to a Google Drive in our chat after we finish up here. So if you guys are interested, you can put the, uh, the pictures in that drive in a folder with your name on it, um, just so you know, you can see what other people have done. Other people can see what you've done um, and get some inspiration because we really want you guys to go out um, sometimes off the screen uh, and spend some time outside with your families and start taking pictures. Does that answer your question? Sorry guys, I can't see the chat. So if anyone's put any uh, any more questions in the chat, you're feel free feel free to unmute and ask me them. Okay. So um, I'll also have a couple minutes to answer questions after I explain the assignment. Like I'm pretty sure the moderator did a really good job, but I'll just go over it again quickly just to make sure that uh, everyone understands it. Okay. So um, again, it's just going to be five pictures. And it's going to be about the year in lockdown. So it could be anything. It could be, again, inside your house, outside. It could be a family member. It could literally be, um, you know, fruits or vegetables. Like, they're very colorful. You can arrange them in a certain way or put them in a certain way and take pictures of them. That does not mean raid your mom's fridge. But you can use a couple. Um, and you can use that. Or you can do it of toys. You can do it of pencils. Anything that anything you like. So if you guys have a maybe a collection of something, or if you like, you know, if, if school, like, you know, you're, you're in, uh, you're in lockdown, but you're still going to school. So maybe take a setup, take a picture of the setup that you have for school, anything like that, anything uh, that makes you happy or that's been keeping you occupied during lockdown is something that you can take a picture of, right? And keeping the, uh, keeping in mind the skills that we learned today. Um, also, again, like I said, no Photoshop. So the apps that were mentioned today are very good to use. Um, there is Lightroom and if and there is Visco for anyone that's on iPhone and there is also Snapseed. I personally would uh, recommend that you guys use Lightroom just because um, everyone has access to that. And next class I will actually, so if you, if you don't want to use Lightroom, uh, you, can, you don't have to use it just because we haven't gone in depth about it today. But I will try to next week go into depth more with it and give you guys a basic rundown of how it works. And then you guys are able to use it for your future assignments. Okay? Any more questions, guys? Okay, so it looks like nobody has questions. I'm going to put the link to the drive here um, in the chat. So please take a look. That's the drive, uh, sorry, the Google Drive, where you'll be putting all your assignments. Um, again, this is not mandatory. This is all for fun. If you don't feel comfortable putting your po your pictures, you don't have to. Um, it's just something we want to for you guys to go out and do again, you know, spend some time outside, maybe with your family. Um, there is a sample folder. We would like you to name it like that, just so we know who's putting in um, the who's putting in the images. Um, if you have any questions, you can always ask me. I'm the one that had send sent you the Zoom link for today. Um, somebody's asking about your email, Warda, if you feel comfortable sharing that. Yes, I will put it right in the chat, is, uh, if everyone has access to it. Yeah. And that's the email for, uh, I think, also the person that wanted to email me for this. I don't think it went through. Can you try one more time? 
Oh, looks like. And there. also let me know in the chat if there's anything. You guys oh, sorry. I just want to say if there's anything that you guys want me to focus on. Um, okay. You accidentally. <laughs> sorry? Oh, no, you, I think you accidentally sent it to her privately rather than the whole group, but that's fine. No worries. Um, I didn't realize. Uh, I'll fix that. I'll put it publicly for everyone. Um, if anyone has any help that they need, anything like that, I can help them. And if anyone has any uh, feedback for me, like if you want to let me know things that you want to learn in the next uh, three weeks, let, definitely let me know. I can alter the uh, curriculum a little bit and try to see if I can add that into it as well. Okay, guys? Perfect. And before everyone goes, we just have a quick short poll um, about our workshop today. Because as you know, this is all part of a series called the 20, uh, uh, Reconnecting with our community. Um, so if you could just take a minute uh, and fill this out. Thank you guys so much. It was lovely meeting everybody. Uh, thank you to our host, Warda. Um, I for sure learned a lot from her. Uh, and I can't wait to put it to use. Okay, I'll just add the email. Guys, make sure before you go that if you would like to share your stuff that you keep the Google Drive link or uh, try to save it or just open it up in a tab. And my email is also over there, okay? What I can do is after this um, session, I can send this drive to everybody who registered on our form. So the email that you guys signed up with, I will send this drive to that. Okay, uh, as we're just finishing up the polls, it looks like somebody has a question about when to use autofocus or auto settings. Would you like to answer this today or would you like to hold on to it for next another session? Oh, no, I can just briefly explain it today. Um, if that's something that um, I can actually try a, um, incorporating in future sessions, future sessions as well and focusing a little bit more on. But a quick explanation of that would basically, um, I think on phones, as far as, I'm uh, as far as I know, I don't know about Androids too much, but iPhones, it's mostly autofocus. Uh, I know you can try to press different areas and it makes the yellow box that lets you focus in other areas, but it's pretty much autofocus. So, um, Wait, I have one thing to say. Yeah. So how do you, how do you like add an image onto the file onto for the Google, Google Drive? Drive. Mm -hmm. It's just drag and drop. So you take it from your desktop and you can just drag it into the- Okay. Drive, okay? Okay, so quickly, um, it depends. I would say start with auto. Um, if you feel like you have enough practice with auto that you want to experiment with manual, definitely go ahead. Uh, manual is the uh, proper method to shoot uh, in photography in general, but uh, we're focusing on phone photography, which is why I didn't know if uh, you guys would be too interested in that. Um, but if you feel like you can uh, use manual and you like manual and that's something you want to venture into, definitely take a shot at it and see how it goes. And I can also help you out if you need to. Any other questions, guys? No? Okay, so that looks looks like we're wrapping up now. Um, so thank you again for being with us today, Warda. Um, oh. Okay, I, this is a question for me. Sorry, on the chat, I will answer the sister here. Um, but once again, thanks everyone, and we hope to see you next week. Okay, assalamu alaikum everyone. See you next time. Bye!